China's state council has released a guideline on the protection of left-behind children. The term refers to those whose parents work away from home in big cities and leave their children in those less developed small towns or villages. And my colleague Zhong Shu joins me now for more talks on this. Well, Zhong Shu, good evening. Uh, walks us through this guideline and how it's supposed to help those children. So let me start with government responsibilities that the guideline has laid out. The guideline states that local governments should keep themselves well informed of left behind children and make sure they're properly cared for in the absence of their migrant worker parents. A file should be set up for each child by the township level government. Assistance should be provided for the children to talk with their parents by phone or video chat. Also, the children should be visited regularly by local officials. The guideline also specifically asks that no children under the age of 16 live entirely by themselves. Migrant workers are advised to either take their children with them or have one parent stay at home. Those who cannot do so must appoint a responsible guardian. Statistics show that over 61 million children now fall into this category. More than 2 million live on their own without an extended family member to care for them. Now take a look at this story featuring some of the left-behind children in Hunan province. For decades, academics and those in power have been trying to work out a solution to the problem of left-behind children. Now, statistics suggest this problem is getting worse. So as more and more children are forced to live in rural areas without their parents by their side, we're here to find out what are the emotional and psychological impacts upon them and what can be done about this. This is three-year-old Liu Xiaoyu and her six-year-old sister, Liu Xiyi. Their mum and dad are working in Shaoxing, Zhejiang. Their dad is a security guard, and their mum works in a shop. The girls are looked after by their grandma, Zhou Qing. Uh, come on. Liu Liangun is Zhou Qing's son. He's come home for a few days to both see his children and to tend to his father's grave during the annual tomb sweeping festival. It's the first time he's been back for nearly a year. Liu dropped out of school very early because his mother couldn't afford the fees. He did farm work and odd jobs for a few years before finally heading to the coastal cities. Liu wants so much to be with his daughters. However, were they with him in Shaoxing? Firstly, they couldn't get into school and secondly, they couldn't get medical insurance. Their household registration, or hukou, is in Xuefeng so entitles them to these benefits only at home. According to the most recent major study, there are over 61 million left-behind children like Liu Xi in China. That's one in five of all of China's children. Their nutritional level is usually lower, their rate of suffering disease and injuries is usually higher, and they're more prone to being victims of violence and sexual abuse. Every teacher we spoke to at this school said that they can tell a clear difference between the left behind children and those not left behind. Fifty-four percent of the school's 622 pupils are left behind children. This is reflective of the overall situation in the countryside in Hunan, as well as in four other provinces in China. 
most left-behind children are cared for by their grandparents. 爷爷奶奶一般是不会像农村里的话，一般是不能没有这个能力去辅导学生，去辅导自己的子女。啊，他回家以后根本就不管学习，无非就是玩、吃啊，就是这这样的。那么，呃，在学习上是全靠的是这个老师。那么，至于身体上，你像我们学校的留守儿童，在这里寄宿的也比较多，有几十个，而且呢，一年级、二年级都有小朋友几几岁的都有寄宿的学生。反正年轻的，我们这个农村的话，基本上这样的，年轻一点的，四十岁以下的，基本上都在外面打工。Liang Gun's time is up. He must go back to Zhejiang to work. Then, just as we're about to leave. He reveals to us that he and his wife have reached a decision. They'll take their youngest daughter to Zhejiang with them. His 12-hour-plus shifts will mean he may only get back in time to see her sleeping. But this, he says, will make it all worthwhile. It's a vast group of young children who share the same plight, having to grow up far away from their parents with limited or no assistance at all, and in desperate need of help and care. So, yeah. uh, let's talk about the origin of this problem. Uh, how did it come into being, and how it came into public view? Well, the, the problem actually starts with more people wanting to move to bigger cities for higher paying jobs. Because of a rather rigid household registration or hukou system, the children can't get health care or education where their parents now work. Therefore, they're left behind in their parents' hometowns, often in the care of extended family members. Statistics show that close to 40 percent of all children in China's rural areas are considered left behind. Sichuan and Henan, two provinces that see huge outpourings of labor in search of better jobs, also witness the highest percentages of left behind children in all of China. 11 percent of all left behind children are in Sichuan, 10.7 percent are in Henan. The phenomenon of left behind children and the many problems that have arisen with it were brought to the public eye after a chain of rather heart-wrenching stories made national headlines. For instance, last year, four children in Guizhou province were found dead from pesticide poisoning in an apparent suicide. The young siblings had been living on their own without any help from relatives. So, and other stories include child molest, uh, children being molested by strangers, and of course, some of the other horrific details included in that package we just saw. Of Back course, to you. those appalling stories tell us how big a problem that is. Thank you very much, Zhongshan.